Hi, Stephen Judd. Thank you so much for joining us today from Aqua Metals. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you th for having us, Brian. Absolutely. Yeah, so let's let's jump right into it. For for investors that are not familiar with your business, uh, do you think that you could offer a brief overview of Aqua Metals? Yeah, sure, Brian. I can just do a, a two minute overview for you, for everybody listening in. Um, so first off, Aqua Metals is really leading a revolution in clean metals and, and most importantly, battery recycling in the lithium ion battery recycling space. And I will show a visual here um, to get right to the point of our um, game changing environmental performance. So the goal with lithium recycling is to close the loop and get to the point where we're recycling these minerals and using them over and over and over again. And Aqua Metals approach to the recycling process is very environmentally friendly as evidenced by the data that you can see in this slide. On the left here, um, there's two other processes, one called pyro, one called hydro, which is hydrometallurgical, and then aqua refining. And if you take 1,000 kilograms or one ton of black mass, which is uh, the, the combination of crushed batteries, which is the input to our process, you'll make 4.2 tons if you're using smelting technologies, which are used today, of CO2. And that greenhouse gas being 4.2x the weight of what's being recycled is just unsustainable. Hydrometallurgical processes, rather than through CO2 um, being generated from heat, they generate the CO2 through chemical reactions. And that's almost three times as much uh, greenhouse gas. Aqua refining is de minimis amounts of CO2. So we've fully decarbonized the process because we power our process by electricity instead of fire or chemicals. On the other part, part of the equation, the sodium sulfate, which is a waste stream, um, uh, you can see quite a bit, um, nearly almost the same weight of, of the uh, black mass being recycled, particularly in hydro, that we uh, eliminate and have zero sodium sulfate waste stream. So decarbonize on the, on the, on the gas side, and we've eliminated the uh, environmental impact of sodium sulfate waste streams that all the other site processes have to deal with. Um, I'm going to show now... Um, what it looks like in our aqua refining pilot plant that we have built in Tahoe Reno Industrial Center um, in Nevada, which is about 20 minutes uh, east of where Judd, um, our CFO, and I are sitting here in South Reno. This pilot has been operating for about a year and extracting critical minerals um, throughout its operations and getting ready to scale um, for the company to take towards our commercial plant, which I'll subsequently show you a picture of. But as you can see, the pilot is um, the only sustainable lithium uh, operation, we believe, um, that's operating in North America that's able to recover all these valuable critical minerals like cobalt and nickel and copper and lithium, of course, and manganese. And we're natively producing these materials, um, and particularly the lithium in the form of lithium hydroxide, without um, and we've proven without the carbon impact and without the dangerous work environments that you might see in other alternative technologies, um, people can go to the facility and see what's going on um, uh, and visit as well as work there in regular street clothes with nothing more than a lab coat and some safety glasses. Our process is a regenerative process where we generate the chemicals that we use to do the recycling within our closed, own closed loop. And therefore, um, uh, we're not bringing in train loads of chemicals for one-time use and then trucking out train loads or truck loads of sodium sulfate uh, on the back end. Um, the aqua refining campus that we're building is just about a mile and change down the road in Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, uh, again, 20 minutes east of Reno in Nevada. And we've uh, acquired a five acre parcel with an existing building, which is this lower building on the right that you see. And this will be Aqua Metal's first scaled commercial demonstration facility. And we're currently upfitting this building and preparing to turn it on and begin the commissioning process in the second quarter by the second quarter of next year. So really the first half of next year is finishing outfitting this from the learnings from our pilot operations for a year and getting it up and running and producing up to 3,000 tons per year 
a black mass, which equates to about 45 to $50 million a year of revenue run rate. We'll subsequently add these additional buildings in a future phase to get to two uh, to 10,000 tons or 150 million or so in today's metal prices of revenues from this one uh, five acre parcel. Um, this is a little bit of a cutout of what it looks like inside, very safe working environment, very clean operation. Um, I also just wanted to touch for a moment on our partnerships from a commercial perspective. The company has already achieved a supply of black mass from black mass providers. And this is about our downstream partners, um, inclusive of 6K Energy, um, that is a cathode active material producer. And they're building a 13,000 ton per year facility, as you can see here, um, an image of in uh, uh, Jackson, Tennessee, where we'll provide feedstock for them initially from our Sierra Arc that I just showed you the, the overhead view of, and then ultimately by co-locating another arc um, near their facility. There's also Dragonfly Energy that is um, nearby, just down the road from us, and they've already taken lithium ion batteries, um, um, uh, lithium, I'm sorry, lithium um, hydroxide and built lithium ion batteries and uh, cycled them through what we believe together is the first truly carbon decarbonized recycled lithium ion batteries and cycle tested those. And they are going to be an off taker for aqua metals, lithium uh, products. Um, in addition to that, um, we have taken an investment from a company in Korea called Yulho Materials, and that company is uh, currently constructing a 8,000 ton per year, going to 24,000 ton per year, about a half a billion dollars worth of materials to be uh, recycled. And they um, liked our technology so much that we agreed with them in the Korea market to license the technology and anticipate um, uh, as a follow on to the Sierra Arc uh, facility and another arc in South Korea. So with that, uh, I'll hand it back over to you, Brian, um, after just a brief uh, overview of Aqua Metals, because I'm sure you have some questions. Yeah, absolutely. You know, battery recycling has gotten a lot of investor attention over the past few years as we've seen a push toward, call it onshoring or nearshoring of battery production. I guess first, do you recognize that tailwind? Do you see it? Do you see it in reality? Do you think it's a tailwind for the industry? And then... In addition to that, what's your outlook for recycled battery materials over the next year or two in terms of uh, in terms of demand uh, from uh, from producers? Yeah, great, great questions, Brian. So um, the onshoring is definitely happening. And if you um, uh, put a map up of the number of gigawatt hours of battery production, that's happening in the U.S. to begin um, with this decade in 2020, you would see the Tesla 5 gigawatt hour gigafactory just down the street from our operations in Tahoe Reno Industrial Center. Um, now, if you look at the projected um, uh, and sets of projects that are already funded and, and under development are already operating, that 5 gigawatt hours from a single plant is expanding to over 1,000 gigawatt hours uh, and in multiple gigafactories. So the onshoring of battery cell production, as well as cathode active material production that supports that, as well as, of course, recycling, is um, for this decade alone, uh, well over 200x in uh, uh, increase in quantities. So that's definitely an onshoring um, and a build out of an entire new industry right here in the United States that's currently and obviously dominated um, by China. Uh, and that will allow uh, the United States to be able to feed these critical battery minerals back in to the production of um, battery energy storage systems and, of course, electric vehicles and the like. Um, you also asked about the recycling infrastructure um, to support that. One comment I will make there is um, as students of history, Aqua Metals knows a lot about lead battery recycling uh, because we have a technology that also supports that. And if you look at that more mature battery industry um, that exists today, which is a $65 billion industry, about 80 to 90% of the critical minerals, um, primarily, of course, lead that is in those batteries came out of old batteries from recycled sources versus mining sources. Today in lithium, um, it's under 1%. Uh, so the recycling industry is nascent and it's a huge opportunity and there's a lot of infrastructure getting built um, uh, to support um, the growth of that percentage of recycled minerals getting from less than 1% ultimately um, to a mature industry closer to um, nearly all of those critical minerals. Let's dig the minerals up once 
use them over and over again. Yeah, you know, I, I think that that's a really good comparison that you make between lead batteries and lithium ion batteries uh, in terms of opportunity for the market. And, and, and to that point, I guess, as you're looking forward, what are call it, the key challenges ahead of, uh, of getting to that level? And what are the opportunities that you think might lead your business there? Yeah, so the opportunities are abound as it relates to um, all the emerging new EV manufacturers, as well as the uh, mature um, automakers that are adding many EVs to their product lines, uh, building out their infrastructure to source these critical minerals and supporting them of course, are the battery cell manufacturers and then the cathode active uh, material producers. And that creates um, a brand new nascent industry that will ultimately be one of the largest industries in the United States, let alone the world, as we electrify the world. And that includes things like transportation and battery energy storage systems um, uh, with tremendous quantities of batteries to support solar and wind farms um, to, to provide power back to the grid and stabilize that grid, um, home energy storage systems for all of us, et cetera. So that, that opportunity that uh, exists is something that I don't think any of us have seen in this generation uh, as we transition uh, more and more from a uh, oil and gas fossil fuel powered world to a battery energy storage and renewable energy powered world. And that creates opportunities abound for er any player in any part of that ecosystem. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that macro viewpoint. Um, you know, as, as you're thinking about aqua metals specifically, what, what do you see as the milestones ahead of you in terms of commercialization next year and in 2025? Yeah, so um, uh, to, to give you a visual aid on that, I may as well pull up our um, slide on our timeline. And um, this is our commercial scaling timeline that starts at the left, kind of where we sit at the end of Q4 of 2023. And that pilot plant that I was showing you is bringing that to full scale operations of 24 hours by seven day a week operations. While um, in the meantime, we complete the non-recurring engineering work that we've been doing with 6K Energy on taking our output, which are those critical battery minerals and getting them into a form that is a slurry form that they can use as the input to their electrified cathode active material production process. That's all kind of wrapping up as we speak this quarter. And then as we get into the next quarter, we'll be finalizing um, our first licensing and off-taker agreements. And we'll have a lot more to say about our licensing and off-takers and those supply contracts to our existing and announced partners and probably some new ones. And then we'll, um, an engineering and operations perspective, to complete the build out and upfitting of our commercial scale facility, which I showed you the picture of that campus environment, that building that was on the lower right, and begin commissioning that facility um, in half one of 2024. So, really, in a matter of just a few months, we'll begin um, to introduce the first black mass into that process um, by the end of the quarter two of uh, 2024, also known as half one of 2024. Then um, we'll be commissioning that through the remainder of the year and scaling towards that 3000 ton per year capacity um, and then ramping operations um, in 2025 and beyond at our Sierra Arc, um, as well as supporting um, the initial uh, build outs of the arcs that are gonna be in South Korea as well as adjacent and nearby 6K Energy in Jackson, Tennessee. Yeah, very good. And just I guess shifting gears a little bit, there's there's been a lot of uh, a lot made of the IRA and its support of various tech industries, various green energy. Um, what role do you see government playing in supporting industry development? And do you think you know there are areas that could be improved, or what's your viewpoint there? So there's been a lot of uh, government support for the, the build out of this conversion of oil and gas to an electrified world already. And um, in my view, it's more than um, uh, we've seen since the WPA. Uh, and if you look at um, the history of uh, the U.S. plowing uh, major dollars, whether they're grants or loan guarantees, uh, into the space. Um, this this is something that is a once in every few generations of an opportunity for the companies that are building out technology in the ecosystem. Uh, Judd and I were just at um, a conference where some DOE folks were, and um, they very clearly articulated that um, the DOE 
um, uh, grant program um, that we're seeing is really for companies just like Aqua Metals, the stage where you've proven your technology from a pilot perspective, the government can provide grants to get that to, uh, to commercial scale. And as you then get to the commercial scale with whatever it is you're doing, in our case, it's battery recycling. In other cases, it's going to be cathode active material production or cell production. Um, then you do go to the loan program office and you can get very favorable financing for the build out of the hundred million to a billion dollar type facilities. So the government has been very supportive uh, from the, um, the, the dollars and support on that front. We're also applying for USDA um, loan guarantee. Um, which our company has in the past successfully um, uh, uh, won a $10 million uh, loan guarantee and repaid that in the past. And um, that is another way um, that we can leverage the Rural Business Development Fund to create good jobs in rural America like we're doing and other companies are doing to uh, help to finance and fuel and power that. There's also government policies um, around um, uh, percentage of minerals that need to be in um, the batteries that are being uh, built and sold in the U.S. In, in the form of EVs, for example. And um, as those numbers go up um, uh, in terms of tax uh, requirements for um, discounts on those vehicles and tax benefits for the seller of the vehicles as well as the buyers of them, um, there's a lot of government policy that is really encouraging that growth and stimulating the growth um, of the marketplace that's there. So um, those are just a few examples of things the government is doing. Uh, one, one thing that I would like to see more of um, as an obstacle to um, EV adoption, and we see a lot of articles these days um, about um, uh, the slowdown of EV adoption, it's still a curve that goes from you know, a 60 degree angle down to a 45 degree angle of growth, um, but that is um, kind of like range anxiety people get. So charging infrastructure is going to be key, and I'd like to see more government um, uh, support for companies that are trying to build that charging infrastructure and support the private companies that are doing that. Um, so uh, the buyers of these electric vehicles are more and more comfortable with the many places they can stop and charge their vehicles. And while they're at it, they ought to put some signs up um, that says not only gas next left and next right, but show where all that charging infrastructure that's fabulous that the country already has to help people um, uh, get comfortable with, you know, making that electrification shift in their transportation needs. Yeah, I think I think that's a really good point. I think that that's probably something we'll need to see to get people comfortable with EVs. Um, I guess switching from the public funds that that are that are available in the sector to your own financial footing, I guess how would management describe the company's financial footing? As we don't we don't have a you know public coverage of the. Yeah, so Judd, why don't you take that one? Yeah, no, I'd be happy to take that question. Um, the company's been very disciplined in our approach to, um, in terms of like costs and expenses. Um, we did in the quarter, the last public um, reported quarter Q3, uh, just under $26 million in cash, which is good because uh, we've been able to keep our costs at about $3 million a quarter. Um, so it provides some runway there. Um, now, as we're heading into next year, um, you know, we have um, applied for the USDA grant to help, or the USDA loan guarantee to help fund the build out of our plant. Um, so we're looking for non-dilutive, um, low cost of capital ways that we think that we have access to, um, to help fund that growth um, moving forward. So we've been we've been pretty fortunate um, and be able to, to move forward on our plan and execute with not having to spend a, a significant, significant amount of time um, thinking about, you know, the funding piece of it. Excellent. Thanks. Um, and I, I suppose we're at that time where investors are taking stock of what's happened in the past 12 months, and they're looking out to the next 12 months and beyond. So as you consider 2023, what do you see as the company's, call it, biggest achievements? And, and what do you see as the biggest opportunities for 2024? Certainly. So um, uh, we've achieved a lot in 2023 by getting our pilot plan up and running and uh, proving that it's not just a PowerPoint presentation, but you can come and tour the facilities. And that's been really valuable for our investors to feel and see um, us making these critical battery minerals right before their eyes, again, in this clean, safe um, environment. So uh, that has been a great accomplishment that we've had in 2023 um, on that front. It's also been uh, very useful for our pilot to inform 
the build out of our commercial plant. We see other companies in the space that are doing what I would characterize as moonshots, trying to go from a bench scale to a massive scale. And that's very capital intensive, um, not only uh, by going to that massive scale initially before you're into uh, a significant amount of revenues, but it also contains a lot of high risk. And we've avoided that risk by um, taking the time in 2023 to really operate our pilot operations, which again, inform very well um, uh, with a great degree of confidence, our ability to execute on that first commercial plant. Um, the other thing that we've leveraged the pilot for, um, in addition to the technical validation, the de-risking of the technology, is um, uh, being able to generate representative samples of the critical minerals, such as the nickel and the cobalt and the lithium, et cetera, and get that into the hands of our partner 6K Energy um, uh, in the for form of um, uh, a special slurry that we developed for them with a non-recurring engineering development we did for them, which in turn gets those materials from a recycled source into the hands of very large cell manufacturers um, this year, as well as um, EV manufacturers that are verticalizing into their own cell manufacturing. Um, with Dragonfly Energy, as I mentioned earlier, we've also been able to provide samples from our plant in 2023 in the form of the lithium hydroxide um, that we provided for them to generate those first batteries that have ever been made from decarbonized, sustainable, recycled um, batteries right here in uh, the U.S., literally practically just down the street from each other. Um, as we look into 2024, a lot of what 2024 will be about is the consummation of those commercial relationships that we've been spending all this time um, uh, building uh, up to in 2023, using that pilot plant as our tool, uh, and then, of course, turning on the commercial production plant and showing the excitement of now uh, producing truckloads of materials uh, and beginning to generate uh, North America's first um, uh, totally sustainable decarbonized lithium ion battery recycling revenues for aqua metals. Excellent. Well, thank you both so much for joining us. Uh, this has been an excellent use of time, at least from my perspective, and I, I think it'll help to shed some light on the company to the street. Appreciate the time and great questions. Thanks, Brent.